Our students, Brian Proctor, the art teacher, is back. So let's get right into this video because it's kind of long, got a little long for me. So this is a, this is actually a paper towel roll, but it's a cylinder. And this is a very powerful shape, powerful tool to use for drawing, especially the anatomy. So we're going to get right into that. But in the beginning, it's it's a little it's a little long. It's a little boring, but you have to stay with that. You have to stay with this so that you can get through the whole video. So that you, at the end, when we start drawing the anatomy, you'll know exactly why I did what I did in the beginning. So, yeah, you can't learn the song if you don't listen to the lyrics. So let's jump right into this and go for drawing. Here we go. All right. The hardest part of doing this video was trying to figure out where to start. So let me start here. Now, truth be told, it's like 5.15 in the morning, and yeah, sometimes I just can't sleep because I got ideas on my head. All right, we're going to start here. Let's say the word hat, okay, and then book, and then... 100. All right, now I get a, still get comments on people that say that they can't draw uh, circles or they can't draw ovals or they can't draw a square or a triangle. Now, first of all, because I just I just had an email last night about a guy who was saying, I can't do, I can't do this, I can't do that. So the thing I wrote back to him is, first of all, never say you can't do. Say, it's a little hard for me right now, but with practice, I can get it. So never say to yourself, you can't. So if you can write these words, then you can make these letters. So you can make these shapes because if you look at an A, an A is a triangle already. That's just what it is. An H, capital H, there's your square or rectangle. Book, here's your, your, your um, circles. And when you do 100, there's basically your ovals. These are more egg shapes because I was just kind of in a rush, but there's your ovals. So if you can write, then you can draw. So anybody that can write can draw. A lot of people just don't put their heart into it when from being young. You know, they might say, I want to be an engineer or something like that. But if you can write, then you have the ability to draw, but you just, those people just don't pursue drawing. They just turn their, their, their minds into doing something else. So let's get on with the lesson. Now that you know that you can draw these shapes, don't say that you can't do them. Just to say it might be a little hard for me now, but I'll be able to get it later. So the shape that we're going to work on is the cylinder. This is the cylinder. This is going to be the the whole shape that we're going to work on and we're going to draw people from using this simple cylinder shape. So one great exercise is, and it's something that you should be doing and I'm not saying, Oh, you should try this. You should, you should do that. Let's get established an eye line. So first of all, this is from an old paper towel, you know, yeah, it's a little raggedy. I should have cleaned it up, but I didn't because I'm lazy. All right. If you look at it straight on, all it is, is just basically this shape here. It's just two lines, and then there's basically a rectangle. What happened to my red pen? It's basically a rectangle. The only thing it takes on a shape, a different shape, is when you turn it in. So what we're gonna do, using this eye line here, we're gonna do this end here, And this in here, and I just was giving a thought, some kind of thought for a second. I just lost it. Now what we're going to do here, we're going to rotate this from one end to the other. And I should not have put it, let's do this. Bring it down a little bit because I want that eye line in the center. So let's put this in the very center of this thing here. Now, you have this end, and then you flip it over, and you have this end. You have two ends, okay? Let's get that for a second. 
Starting out slow, but trust me, it'll get better in a minute. So now we're going to have a middle, the middle, which is going to be, get it in camera, like this. So here's that O for book, right there in the center. Now the hard part is when you start to turn it. So when you turn this circle, it just becomes, <clears throat> it becomes an oval. I'm trying to keep this centered on the camera. You see how that, it just becomes more of an oval and it thins out and it thins out and it thins out until you can't see it. So this is a good practice here. So we have that one. Let's do this. I should have left more space or either draw through. We have this. It's not so much of an oval. It's going to turn, not so much of a circle. It's going to turn more into an oval. And then it's going to oval out more. And then even more, and then even more like that. So what you're going to have is this, and it's going to go back into the other shapes, which I didn't know if it was going to do that, but I know now. I'm going to go back, more, and then back. Well, this is going to be narrow. This is going to be less narrower than that. This is going to be that too, until it's square. And then you have, did I have one here? Like that. Let's see if I can pin this because I didn't really want them to go into one another. So you have your circle. You have more oval. And it, you would have to gauge it by how much you turn it. And because it's on the line, because it's center, it won't go back in space. And then this one. This one. And then finally, this here. So hopefully you could, you understood that. Let me take it off the line, but just, just, let's just say we're still going to keep it on the line. We're going to go this way. So again, we have this one here. We have the next one, which is going to kind of curve in. I'm not going to do so many this time. It's going to oval out more. And you have this. And I said, because it's on a center line, it's not really going to go back in perspective. Then you have this next one. And then you have flat. Now they're all going to be the same height. So instead of making them so long, I'll just make them a little shorter. That could have been open. There could be one more here, more like a little more open than that. And then you could have had the circle. And that could have been the circle. So the only difference is, is the length between or the distance between the opening. And then a lot of people have trouble with this. And this is the problem that they have. Where's my red pencil? is when you do this front circle or oval, this part, the, close, the part that's closest to you right here, this shape that it takes, the back end has to take that same shape. It can't be like that. You can't have a circle here, a circle there, or it can't be like this. That's too much. It has to have that same amount of circle to it. See, now that's the letter C. So you'd have to draw another letter C the exact same way if, it's, if you're drawing that perfect cylinder.
Now some people say, oh, that's still too hard. So what you do here is you draw an oval and you draw another oval. Make it a little easier for you. Make it a little harder, but make it a little easier. And then connect it. Or for you people still having trouble drawing an oval, make a zero and another zero like that and connect them. Well now, Brian, that's even harder. No, you say to yourself, which 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 um which side is gonna be facing you? Which side do you want to keep? So let's just say we'll keep this side. No, let's say this this side, yeah, see that is a little harder. Put a line here. This side is closest to you. So you're gonna do the opposite if I don't screw up. And then you just erase that piece here. So remember, so if you're doing that C, you're doing that C here. If you do it the other way, and if that's hard, just draw two lines and then draw your, your zero and your zero. So we kept this part. Now let's do this. Let's just say this is going to be the inside of your cylinder. And let's blacken this in so that you won't get lost by what I just did. So you want to reverse that. So you want to keep this. This is going to be the front. You want to keep this letter. And then so you want to keep that letter. So you would erase this. And that's going to be the opening of your cylinder. Now, you've done it from the side. Now, we're going to do it from the top. Now, stay with me now because I know people are like, okay, this is this could be boring. Let me fast forward. But when you fast forward, you miss part of the song. And then you won't know how to sing it later because you just miss part of the song. So that's laying on its side. Now, let's do one that's laying on its top. Now, I put the center line in here. So you won't see the top and you won't see the bottom. If you were a person, this would be your head right here. This would be your head, your shoulders, your arm, and you'd be standing there. So that's your eye line right there. Or if you were just, this was small, this would be your head right here, right here. And this is your eyes here. This is your eye line, okay? This is the back of your head. But I just drew through so you can see it. This would be your, your ear. And this would be your hair, be the back of your head. This is where your eyes are lined up. So that's what I mean by your eye line, your eye level, or your, um, you know, your vanishing point is this. That's a whole other story. So let's do the top. This is very important, as I say, so don't skip it. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this, and we're going to go up and down. Pretty simple. The line again, it's your eye line. First one is going to be this. Let's see if I can do this without going through, but I think I'm just going to go through again. So that's going to be this. It's the same thing if you turn it the other way. It's going to be this, and then we're going to bring it down to that. So the bottom is going to be here, like this. So here's your center. And it should be on one line, but I'm, I'm rushing it. So as you turn this down, as you turn this down, you start to see that opening just a little bit. Remember, as round as this is, it's the same here. So you have this, and just, it would just come down more. If I had different colors, which I do. So this first one, let's say is red. So this one is gonna be blue. And it's gonna be just there's too much roundness right there, so that one. Next one's going to be green. Come down. Next one's going to be black. And it's going to be more opening because I did it too, too small. And then you see, you start seeing the bottom of it. And I say, just as round as this is, this has to be that round, and the next one is this last one, and that's going to be pencil, pencil color. So it'll be the same thing with the other way around. This you start to start to oval it more, and because this is above the eye line, you're starting to see your bottom, the green. 
what color is that? You'll see the bottom of it. Same thing is you'll see the top of it here. Let's just go ahead and do this circle. It'll be like this, like this. Which way are we going, Brian? Which way are we going? We're going right. We're going right. Like this, like this, and then bottom flat. So you see in the bottom of it, where's that circle of it, Brian? Where, where did you go? Where did you go? What did you do? I lost that for just a second. This one, this one, this one's here. This one goes back. This one kind of screwed up here. This goes back too much. I, bring, I made them too close. That's all. But the same thing for the top is the same thing for the bottom. And let me refocus this camera. I'm, I'm going to get me a new camera for 2020. All right. Now, so the reason why I did this exercise, because it's very important when you start drawing your characters, when you start drawing your anatomy, which is what we're about to do right now, and you will understand what I'm saying. Now, when you draw your character, when you draw your anatomy, let's just right quick. I don't know why I keep grabbing my pencil because it's there. This is, this is a quick person. The, you have 13 pieces that we're going to actually be working with. You have one, two, the head, the neck, two, three, four, five, six, the arms, the torso, seven, what did I say, two, four, six, seven, eight in here, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. We're not counting the, the feet and we're not counting the hands because those are different shapes. So what we're going to do here is take this person. And we're going to turn them into a cylinder person. We start out with the chest. Always start out with your torso first. And right off the bat, right off the bat, you will see that because I did this opening, my eye line is somewhere above this person. That's the whole reason, the whole purpose for this. When you start drawing your character, when you really thought drawing your character just by the shoulders or how you place the shoulders or how you place that character, you can tell where your eye line is going to be. So that makes it a lot easier when you started putting in your perspective or your background because you know everything below this is going to be, you're going to see the top and everything above it, you're going to see the bottom. So if this was my ground and this was a car coming next to this guy, you know that I would see the top of that car because my eye line is there. So that's the purpose for that. So now let's do the head, the head as well. And the, the further you get away from that eye line, the more circle it's going to be. No, well, let me stop that for now because you might and it might not be. You just know that you're going to see the top of this guy. The bottom. And the legs. And doing cylinders. Now we're not we're not uh, thinking about the little joints here. We're not we're not even gonna consider those. You know where they go, so we're not considering those. We're not even counting those. Same thing now. When you get here, you have this. Let me pin this. Remember, that same circle is this same circle. That same shape is going to be that same shape. Same thing. And then even if I did the neck, the neck would be here, the head, top of the head. Now, when you start to add your arms and your legs, that's when you change your direction. So let's say I want this guy, one hand is front forward and one hand is back. Let's say this guy's walking. And I've, I've noticed a lot of people that won't get that right. And just by doing the circles, it'll be right. So if he's going to be 
walking and that hand's coming toward me, I'm going to see this open cylinder here like that. And if it's away from me, I'm going to see the reverse. Like so. And remember, this circle has to be, or that part of the circle has to be the same as that. And this is your inside. This is your inside, inside, inside. Now, we're not going to do the, the, the hand or anything like that. We're just doing that. So if I did that and this person was walking or sitting down, let's just say this is his bottom right here. This is this part here. Now, if you, if you don't see this, then your eye line is pretty much right here. If you make it flat, I'm going to make this more out versus straight down because that's his hip. Now, if I want to do the legs, depending on how much the leg is up or out, you do this. And if this leg is straight, by you seeing the opening, you know that leg is straight. Let's put this other leg. Let's do this other leg. So let's say this leg is going up, bent up. So you have your center. You have your this. You all. That's why I do the upside down house. So let's just say we we'll just do that. So if this leg was up, and we're going off my paper. So that cylinder. You're not seeing that. You're seeing this is the opening for that cylinder. As round as this is, this has to be the same way. And if I bring the other leg bent down, so we'll do this. And then that. Because it's above the eye line, you can see the top. Or you won't see the top. You see the bottom. And be like that, or depending on how much is bent before I throw myself off. So you're gonna see that, and then this. This is the hip. You're gonna see this, and then we're gonna see the other part of the leg bent here, like that. And then if you wanted the chest, now depending on if he's gonna be straight up or he can be leaning, you can have that. It also tells you if the person is bent or standing or so forth. You already have your eye line. So let's just say do this. So he's leaning forward and he's leaning forward because you can see the top of that opening. Now when you do the chest, it's not going to be a complete circle. I'm going to get you on that one right now. When you do the chest, you don't want this. You don't want this for the chest. The chest is going to be always oval so that you don't have to, to uh, break that habit. So it's like that. It's going to be oval. That way, as I said, you don't have to break that habit because when you lean forward, it actually takes on that diamond shape like that. You have your collarbone, which goes into your delt. Like that, and your neck comes down when you start to lean forward. But when you're straight up, this collarbone goes straight across, just like that. Your neck is a little V, your head, like that. And then there's your delt here, your chest. So the more you lean forward the body, the more you're going to see this diamond. And this part right here is just going to round it off like that, the same way you would do if it were the cylinder. And then your stomach, the same way. And then the torso, the same way. You're going to round that thing off. Now, let's just say the arms. If one arm was back, let's put this arm back. You're going to see that opening here. Like that. And then you're going to see the same thing there. And then this hand there. And if this was forward... You'd see two. Now, this is one thing in perspective that is kind of easy, kind of hard. You just draw your front circle. Where's the camera? You draw your front circle, and then you draw your back half of the circle where you want it to be 
if it's close, I'm just going to draw half an arm. It's just, just half of his arm. So I'm going to draw this front circle here. And then I'm going to draw this back circle right here. And that's half of his arm there. So now if I, if, if I did, if I had a little more paper space, let's see, let's just use this piece of paper, this end of the paper. And I want it to say like this guy was leaning back, pointing a gun at you. I'd have this one and it would go out to this. And then his hand would be here and it would be pointing that gun at you like that. So doing these cylinders, it's very important that you learn your shapes. I, I, I continue to tell people, learn your shapes. Now, once you have these shapes down, then you can add um, the muscles, the, the, the shapes of the muscles, the definition of the muscles. Now, let's keep going with this, like going into perspective again. Uh, while I was using a pencil, same thing. If you have a guy uh, over, and it's, again... He's either leaning down when you see this, or he's below your eye line. Let's just say this. Ooh, okay, let's just say this, this cat is flying. Now, when you, it's, and see this kind of, it's kind of hard to do. When you do a perspective, when you do a perspective on something, you have your front of your cylinder and the back goes, it's almost going to like a triangle with a circle on it. You just add that other piece of the circle. Like that. And it would be the same thing with the arms, but you don't want to go too crazy. So let's say this guy was flying. So let's just say, if I'm doing a flying position or a pointing position, the first thing I would do is say, how far do I want the end of that arm to come? Like that. So then I would take it back here doing the first circle, the next, and then the next. Or the first cylinder, second cylinder, and the next. So basically, if I kept going, it would go back just like that. So we would end up like this, coming out, this one coming out, like that. Now, if I wanted it straight forward, so if it was flying or, or aiming two guns, I would have it the same way. But if this one was out, say like he was aiming a gun this way and he was aiming one straight for me, then I would just have that one circle. You might see just a little bit of the other one because nobody's arms is, is, is straight, straight. So I would have this one because this is where your focus would be. Like if this was a hand here and he had the gun facing forward. So you just have this one circle and just a piece of it right here because you would have the delt right there. So basically that was just this, and then just that. You won't see that much of this side of that cylinder. You might see just a little bit if there was a second one, or the second half of your arm. And you're using red, just use your red pencil. You, just, you would just see just a little bit. And then that would go into your shoulder, your chest, and as I say, this would be your hand here. All right, now looking back at this guy, if he was sitting, you would see just, depending on how, how much his, the crotch was up, you, you'd see just a little bit of there, a little bit of that. It wouldn't be flat because this whole thing is rounded, so you'd see just a little bit of that and then the circle because if you turn to two cylinders against each other. Then you have that um, appearance of something bending, a person bending. And when you bend, your head has got to, your head has to come forward more forward. Your chin has to come further down. Like his chin is here, but if he bent forward, the chin would have to be way down here. Same way I did this, the chin is way down. So the chin would have to come down and that gives you that appearance of bending. And if I put his arm up, 
let's just say you up and then bend this over. No, that would be, how would that be? If I took it, that's like behind his head. That's why it's throwing me off right now. Yes. This, 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 and that. As long as you have your cylinders right, then it makes it so much easier to draw a person and twist him and bend him. And as I said, once you establish where your openings are, it tells you where your background is going to be. Let's, let's do one more real quick. I don't want to keep this, make this video any longer than I, I need it to be. All right, one thing I did forget. Let's just say you're going to do a guy above. So if you're going to do a guy that's standing above you, yes. Instead of having the, seeing the top of your um, opening, you will see the bottom of your opening. So you're just going to flip that upside down like that. So if this guy's going to be above you, and as, as I say, always start with the torso. So it's going to be, depending on how much above you this character is going to be, determines how much of a circle, how, how much of a circle you're going to make, put it that way. So we have that. So now we're looking up into this cylinder. We're going to have this piece here, the, the, no, let's just do that. Let's just, just go ahead and do this. Because you see in the bottom of it. You're seeing the legs. And they all need to be the same curve. That's the word I'm looking for. The arms, same curve. And it's going to get, this. the closer it gets, the more perspective you're going to put into it, the more wider it's going to get. Remember the, the, this, like that, but that's a bit too much. It's basically you're doing a triangle and a circle, but that's just a bit too much. So here and then here. And then of course, because you would not, see, unless he's looking down at you, you're going to see the bottom of that chin there and then comes into your neck. And that way you can have, you know, some menacing tower, towering, tower, tower I can't say that twice, tower, tower, person standing over you. Make these legs a little longer. And then I said the the, the 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 more angle, the more turn you put, the more that person is going to be towering above you. So if it's like this, you're gonna see you're gonna be closer, so much closer to that that this person or this character is gonna be like way above you. As I say, each one should be the same in the beginning. Now, once you learn how to manipulate that or put the muscle shape in there, it'll be a lot better for you. And then you just see less head. And of course, the arm again. You'll get a lot more perspective in that one. And if you draw that, then the guy's flying because, you know, you, if you don't put the feet on the ground somewhere. But that's a, he's above you, so you would be standing on glass or, or flying. Because you couldn't have, you'd have to, if you're going to put like, if this is too hard of an angle for you to do ground, because like, just say this one, I can put uh, a character here he's dead he's, he's like dead on the ground and noticing i'm still doing my my 
my uh, cylinder. This the leg would have to come this way or be bent. And as I go faster, I just because I'm I'm so used to it. This guy would be dead on the ground, and this guy would be standing above him. But if you change that angle too much, the change uh, the angle <laughs> that that turn is too high like that. And that means the person is high above you. So if I did this, something like this, then the next character, his head would have to be like here. And he could, we would be looking up at this guy. So because you see a lot of this opening, he's, re he's, he's, he's leaning back like this, kind of like looking up at the guy. He's leaning back like, wow, this guy's flying. Here's his head, here's his neck, here's his chest, arm, arm leg like so he's looking up like that so by doing that and then not so much of a circle here not as wide of an opening here he'll have that appearance of looking up especially if you do one arm here and then you do the other circle there so this one and then turn this one that way so they would be seeing this giant or whatever person flying. Remember, you're seeing the bottom of this too. But when you're actually doing the the hip, this is the hips, the, the, the crotch area, it's going to be like that. It's going to come around the arms, uh, around the legs. It's going to be like that. Now, once you learn to manipulate, or once you learn the, the actual shapes of your um, body parts, it becomes easy easier to go ahead and, and put the right shape of the muscles and so forth in. And then you have your character. Like so, without me having to go and do the whole thing. But for the beginning, in the beginning, it's best to be able to do the cylinders. As I, I say, I always harp on people about doing your cylinders. Learn to do your cylinders. Learn to do your shapes, not just cylinders. But since the body would be more of a cylinder than the circle or the square, then it's best to learn the cylinders. And as, as I say, because you because you are looking up at this guy, your eye line is going to be up there somewhere. Yeah, because you're still, yeah, yeah, somewhere up there. Well, that's more of your three-point perspective anyway. Cut. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's add to this guy while I'm while I'm staring at it. If you want to put his arm up, of course, just like looking up. If you just think about it. Am I looking up into this thing? Am I looking down on it? So you'd have to determine where your circle is going to be. Let's just say the arm up. Let's say he was about to deliver that uh, killer blow to the guy. Actually, it would be if you put the circle, if you put the, the uh, delt on there, but we're not really doing the delt. We put the delt on there like that, that circle, then it would wrap or it would come around that circle like that. Just trying to be picky and, and um, precise. See the inside of that and it's got like the killer blow and he's got a whatever, an axe or a sword or whatever he's going to. Kill that guy for real. 
or just in that guy's life. That's a goofy looking axe, Brian. You're looking up at the axe. That was an axe. Yeah, that's better. But yeah. So same thing. That the axe would be that cylinder as well. Seeing the bottom of that. And you see the top of that. And you'd see an axe is shaped. Now, now we're doing axes. It's what is it shaped like this? So if you if he held it up, you would see the bottom of this part right here, this part of the axe. And then it would go into that, into that piece. But you'd see the bottom of that and an axe shaped like that. Really, come on, draw an axe like that. It's a goofy looking axe, but it's like that. So, so a lot of props and tools, props and tools, yeah, okay, props and tools you use, it would be the same thing. If he had a gun in this hand, and at the angle it would be, let's just do it in a circle. And I'll show you in, in um, squares in a second. So you'd see the top of this, bottom of that, and you would see this like that, if he had a gun. And this whole thing works with squares as well. So let me do one cylinder guy and one square guy, and then we'll end this class. So oh, position, position, I don't know. Simple position. Do you want it up? Whatever, just draw. Okay. And I'll do this. I'll do that. Because we're seeing the bottom of it. Let's make it a little closer. So the same thing would go for doing a square. But the problem is with the square is you would have to, a square is like this. Now, if you see the side, it'd be like that. If you see the bottom, it would be like this. The only part about doing a square is you would have to make all your sides blocky. So if I did uh, the bottom, it would still be blocky. I'll just do the square. And same thing with the legs. You would have to do everything back in perspective with the square. And it's just really a little harder. But when putting something like a weapon or something into your hand, into the hand. What did I just do? It's your front of your square, that's your front of your square, and this is the bottom of your square. And this would have to be more like, I guess more like this, if he's turned to the side. But doing the oval is basically the same thing. That's putting like a gun, like I said, put a gun in his hand. Instead of putting a circle, you can put the circle if you if it's hard for you, but then you would have to square it out. But it's the same principle as doing the cylinder. Make sure this is still visible. It's going to go back. And then the bottom of the gun like that. And then you can, you know, add detail to your gun rail. And then your fingers like that. But it's the same principle for a square as it is for a cylinder. So if I have a cylinder and it's going back in perspective, same thing with the square going back in perspective. And as I say, once you drop that first line, you will know where your eye line or your um, perspective line goes because you go all the way back to this point. There it is right there. So anything you draw above it, you know you're going to see the bottom. Or you, yeah, you're going to see the bottom of it. Anything, anything above it, anything below it, you're going to see the top. 
So that it just makes it easier when you're doing perspective if you're doing an interior or an uh, exterior. And let me see if I can do a, think of a quick interior to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So let's just do my character real quick. My character. All right. So I had to think for a second. I stopped it for a second. I had to think about what I was going to do. So here's my center line for that. And I, did, I, I didn't show you guys center lines in any of these drawings because I wanted you to be able to do, other than that, I want you to be able to do the character or the shape first. So here's my center line here, this, and this. This is head and his neck. So right off the bat, we know we're looking, uh, we're looking, um, we're looking up at this guy here. And I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I'm, I'm what I'm going for. I kind of know, but I, I kind of don't know. So because we're looking up, I'm losing it. The line is here. And a lot of times when I draw, the shoulder determines where my eye line is going to be. So I'll follow that down. So let's say my eye line is about right here. So anything above that, anything below that, I'm losing it. I'd say it was five in the morning. Anything below that, you're going to see the top. You're going to see the top of that. So let's just say, let's finish this up and let's see if I can do what I was trying to do in the first place. It's gonna be weird. I have to bend that arm, but I'm not gonna bend that arm. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wing it. So let's just say there's my eye line and this guy is leaning on a desk. As I said, this, this is weird. So there's my eye line, how's my desk? My desk is going to be It's gotta go back. It's gotta go back like this, because this is my this is my that. So this guy that vanishing point for that desk is gonna be right here. Covering that up. Legs are too long for this desk. So he's leaning on this desk. Could, I could have leaned him down a little bit more. So here is that. So if I do a chair, and this is a really bad angle. So if I do a chair behind here, let's just say he's talking to somebody. He's mad, he's talking to somebody. Everything is gonna to go to this line, which is like way out here. And this chair is gonna to be too close to the desk for me. So this guy is here. He's leaning back. In his chair. The legs are going to be under the desk. The other leg is going to be down here. It should be on the floor. The arm is going to be here. You're seeing the back of that arm. You're not going to see that other arm. This chair could be a little bit more. So you got your guy, like your, your eye line or your your... This is your vanishing point, your eye line. It goes going to go all the way across here. So if I ended up having to do that, and that's something else I'll get into in a later video is doing more perspectives. Your eye line is going to go all the way out here. So your your furniture and all your chair, all that stuff is going to go off your page. This too, this is going to go off your page way back here. Now, everything does not have to be on the same point. If you have a point here, and you might have a point here, everything doesn't have to be on that. So if, if I had a chair, that chair could be like, the point for that chair could be like right here. And let's just say how you're going to do a chair. Where was that point at? I don't know. I don't remember. It's about right here. So 
So this would be a two point perspective here because this has got to go way back off of here somewhere. This perspective is hard, but it's easy at the same time once you get it, but it's hard because if you get it wrong, then you're, you're screwed. So that here, cut that chair down about, bring that here up. So move that back to this point here and then that, and I don't know if I screwed this whole thing up, but yeah, because of that eye line. But as I say, once you get that, that first shoulder, once I do anyway, this, that's how I do. Once I get that first shoulder in there, then I know where my, my eye line is going to be because of the direction I do the character. And if I'm doing like um, really small stuff, if I'm not doing like uh, just a like a pinup position, I'll do my characters like this. I'll just do them like that at first. And as I said, I'll always determine by the shoulder, which way is his shoulder tilting? You know, especially if, like I said, if you see in the bottom of the neck or the bottom of the chin, then you know. You're above the eye line or vice versa. If I do a character down, then I'll know the line is here or it's going this way. So my eye line is going to be here somewhere. So you're going to see the top of that character. And then I'll come back and then I will add, you know, like the center line and then the chest, the little tuna can, the house. And then do the legs the way they're supposed to do. So with this rough, then you can go from there and then you can actually make your character. That is if you don't want to put any clothes on them. And the desk is here. foot is going to be there, the other foot is going to be here, the shoulder, the chest, the collarbone, that, and then that. So yeah, I know this video got kind of long and I know that this desk is probably off like crazy because if it's a two point perspective, it needs to go back, it needs to be going back like this. And then back like that. And then that line is like barely there. So you're going to barely see the, the top of this table, which his hands are going to be on. And if he had a phone or something on here, you see some of that because it's just barely above the top of the table. So hopefully by using this technique, you will become a better drawer make it easier for you to do the anatomy. It's just simple. Um, this would be down here and you'd have that circle for the knee. It's just simple shapes. The other leg would probably be about right there. So yeah, study your shapes, study your shapes. As I say, study your shapes. As I try to draw and chew gum at the same time, And one thing about this, once you have this, where's my other one, which is a good one, you're going to put clothes on your character anyway, as long as you have the proportions right, unless you put like the skin tight, uh, you know, Batman suit on the guy or whatever. But if you're putting clothes on the person, then a lot of this, or basically all of it, you're not going to see anyway, because you're going to put the clothes on the guy. So as long as you get the shape right or the proportion right, the rest really doesn't matter because you're dressing this guy. You're covering up 
I'm drawing and chewing gum at the same time. You're covering up a lot of your, I'm not going to say mistakes. You're covering up a lot of your lines. How does that jacket look like when he goes around your neck? So this guy, he got his little Batman thing on, but he's got a suit on at the same time with your wrinkles. So that's going to cover up a lot of your, your lines. Yeah. Since I'm starting to ramble and I'm losing it, I'm going to end it right here. So hopefully, hopefully you got it. You got it. You understand this. Do this practice. Do this practice. Get you toilet paper roll. And I can't believe I was holding that in my hand, the other hand, all this time. Get that. Practice that. Make sure you know where your insides are. So when you turn or when you do your body, you'll always know where your insides are, what direction you're facing with that. And just, just practice a little different thing. Do your, your perspective. Do some perspective shots. These are your inner, inner holes that you're looking at. And then you will see how quickly you will become a better artist. But you need to practice doing your shapes and never, never, never say, I can't. I can't draw an oval. I can't draw an oval. I can't make a circle. I can't do a square. I can't. I, you just stop saying that. You can do it. If you can write your name, then you can do it. You might not be perfect right now, but the more you do it, the better you become. I'm not a great, I'm not a piano player. I'm not going to say I can never play the piano. I might not be a concert pianist. I may never get there, but I'll learn how to play the piano if I wanted to do it bad enough. If you want to learn to draw bad enough, then you'll put your time into it. You'll get out of the TV, you put the game up, you do whatever to find some more time to practice drawing. How much stuff you do now that basically is not going to get you anywhere in life, you know, playing video games or, or, or riding your skateboard or, or talking on the phone or looking at Facebook. You can take some of that time and put it into drawing and become a better drawing and not a better drawer and not say, I can't. So that's my advice, my words of wisdom for the day. Stop saying, I can't do and just start doing and you'll be better. The more you draw, the better you get. All right, I'm out. Class dismissed. I will see you guys in the next class.